Now we're gonna speak about chamber enlargement. How to define chamber enlargement in the ECG. The term enlargement involves both hypertrophy and dilatation. In hypertrophy, there is increase in the size of the individual muscle fibers, not in number. It occurs in pressure overload status like aortic stenosis. Dilatation means that there is stretch of the muscle fibers it occurs in volume overload also the same number of fibers but this is due to volume overload like an aortic rigor reasonably this enlargement will have its effect on the ECG by either increasing the voltage which is height or the duration which is the width of the wave let's start with right atrial enlargement RAE it appears as peaked B wave as we know from before that the B wave shouldn't exceed 2.5 in height so to diagnose right atrial enlargement we have to have a big B wave more than 2.5 small squares in height it commonly appears in leads 2 and 3 and AVF the inferior leads why we know that because the inferior leads are almost going the same direction of the electrical axis which is going with the B wave electrical axis also and it can appear in V1 also it is called B pulmonal this is an old nomination because it was commonly associated with the pulmonary diseases like in this example this is a big B wave if you calculate it from here this is one two almost three small squares in voltage and height this is right atrial enlargement or B pulmonal Left atrial enlargement. As we knew from before, that the SA node first depolarizes the right atrium, then the depolarization or the electrical wave will go through the interatrial septum to depolarize the left atrium, which is in the left. So, reasonably, if I told you that the left atrium became enlarged, so the duration of depolarization of the atrium will be increased. That's why to diagnose left atrial enlargement, we have to have prolonged B wave more than three small squares in width. It appears in leads 1 and 2 and V1. It has different shapes, but before the shapes, we have to have prolonged wave. And then we will look to the shape. Sometimes it will be humbled like that. Sometimes it will be bifid, two beaks. Sometimes it will be biphasic, especially in lead V1. The first beak will be positive because V1 is positioned on the right fourth intercostal space. So it is predominantly capturing the electrical activity mainly from the right atrium or from the right side. But because the left atrium is far from V1 and it will produce higher voltage, it will produce negative deflection. So the first one represents the right atrium, the second one represents the left atrium, and it is negative because it is far from V1. Again, these shapes alone without prolongation more than three small squares don't mean that there is left atrial enlargement. So we have to have prolonged B wave first, then we can see shapes. And even without these shapes, if the B wave is prolonged, it is left atrial enlargement. The RVH right ventricular hypertrophy. As we know that the R wave in V1 should be small and rudimentary. When we find a tall R wave in V1 with inverted T wave in the same lead, this is a sign of RVH. It is commonly associated with right axis deviation and B pulmonal. As we said before, one of the causes of right axis deviation is RVH. Tall R wave in V1 with upright T wave, it's a sign of old posterior MI, as we will see later. This is an example of right ventricular hypertrophy in lead V1, tall R wave, which shouldn't be like this in normal situations, with inverted T wave. If tall R wave with upright T wave, this is another story. LVH. We can diagnose LVH from the ECG when the sum of the S wave in V1 plus the R wave in V6 or V5 
the sum of both voltages is more than 35 small squares. So SV1, which is this, plus R in V5 or V6, more than 35 small squares in height or 7 big squares, 7 big boxes. Second parameter is the sum or the height of the R wave in lead 1, one of the limb leads, plus the S wave in lead 3. R1 plus S3. If it is more than 25 small squares in height or 5 big squares, there is LVH. Or the height of R wave in AVL is more than 11 small squares. We may find inverted T waves in the lateral chest leads. In this case, we will call it LVH with a strain. It is commonly associated with lift axis deviation. This is an example here. If we see B wave here is prolonged first, then it is biphasic. Positive, then negative. This is an example of lift atrial enlargement. Here is another thing. First, by the way, there is a right axis deviation. Lead 1 is very dominantly negative here, and lead 3 is positive, so there is right axis deviation. And AVR is out to be predominantly positive, so there is intermediate right axis deviation here. And one of the causes of right axis deviation, as we said, right ventricular hypertrophy. Then V1 here has tall R wave with inverted T wave, and even here also which shouldn't be that way. As we said before, R wave in V1 should be rudimentary and it will start to increase in height till it reach V6, which is called R progression. But here is different. R in V1 is too high with inverted T wave, which is RVH. So this is just showing right axis deviation with RVH. Here axis is normal but there is high voltage of the chest leads. If we calculated the sum of S in V1 plus the R in V5 or V6, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 plus. So the sum of the S wave in V1 plus the R wave in V5 is more than 35 small squares or 7 big boxes, so this is a case of LVH.